Well, that's exactly how I hoped things would go. You know, I'm on my way over to the meadows to drive. Uh, time is on my side. And um, I remember looking at the, the proof that they'd sent out. You know, it's hard because you don't want to race it hard, right? It's He's supposed to win that class. You're supposed to do very well in there. But you don't want to get yourself seventh behind a wall of mediocrity and then ended up losing how is the race going to go? Uh, you know, I'm watching the I'm watching the horses post parade, and I'm watching the horses on the gate. I'm watching Aaron Marin. I'm watching the, the Neil kid. I'm watching Ronnie Wren. It's not a big deal. If I had to just ducked him, and he probably would have raced awesome, also. But I wanted to get him one and a nice, comfortable race. But I wanted him to show me, at the very least, what he showed me last week. It was simple. Ronnie's waiting for me with his horse, and I see the Neil kid coming out of their heart, and Aaron's retreating right away. Cool. I know exactly what's going to happen. I just, and he's such a nice horse to drive because you can change your mind with him quickly. And that's what I'd said to Tim. The, the crappy thing about, about a fast horse like him is you don't know is he going to be able to pace 48, 49? Because if he paces in 51, great. There's only like, 250 more three-year-olds in North America that can do that. So if he can do that extra little bit, he can be a good horse. If he can't, he can just be a useful horse. But he is handy, and he is fast. Before, you know, James, I talked to James, so we made a shoeing change on him when he came over here. Uh, and we put these shoes on a couple of horses, especially horses... And I had a, a wonderful conversation, just brief, but a great conversation with Randy Bendis. For those of you guys that watch the Meadows or any of the racing around, the sharp guy, sharp old trainer, not an old guy, but he's a sharp trainer, knows what he's doing, been around forever, and he's got a Captain Crunch that he likes. And I was explaining how time is on my fighting side. He doesn't have clubby feet, but he's got these, his feet look smaller than they should be. Carter Michael Dio's the exact same way, actually. For a big, strong horse, they have these smaller feet. A little more heel than I'd like to see, but not clubby. It's, it's hard to explain. So I just felt that the he had a lot of pressure in his feet, and that's why he would stall. When he went to go by, he was just doing enough to get the job done. But you want to see him, that merciless attitude that, that good horses have. That's what you want to see, and I hadn't seen it yet. And James and I, James has never seen it. He's lots of talent, you know, big, long hobble, no boots, beautiful horse, but does he have that killer instinct that he never did before? Was it because we castrated him? That may have been a component of it. Quite frankly, likely was, but I don't think it was it. I don't think it was all of it. And he's been so much more comfortable with these shoes on since we got him over to the meadows. We trained him now, we put them on him. He, he wasn't as good with flip-flops on him wasn't quite as good with flip-flops on. He was okay, but not the same. And I come out of the gate, he's quiet, chill, he's such a cool horse that way. And I'm like, all right, I see what's going on, no problem. Boom, over to the front, stop him. I'm letting the Neil kid go as he goes by me. He goes, yeah, you just come back around. No, no, uh, you keep going, I'm good right here. And I knew at that point he was a winner. He was supposed to be a winner before we went on the track. This is horse racing. There's no gimmies. But I knew at that point, the only way I get beat is if the horse in the front is terrible, somebody clears, and I get jammed up in the pack. Okay, maybe. That's unlikely to happen. He's one of the favorites behind me. Looks like he's okay. I sit in the two-hole. I know I'm a winner all the way around the last turn. This, the further we get through the turn, the more he's right on the iron. I get him into the pass lane. I hit him a snap. He goes by. And then I just dropped the whip down on his, not down below, but just on his flank, just so he knew it was there. And I just tapped him. And his fastest three, five strides of the entire mile were the last three or five strides in the mile. And obviously, that's what you want to see. And I pulled up. And Tim was happy. And I said, okay, now two, three weeks off. I want to go through a staking again tonight. But I'm pretty sure I'm, we're not going to the beal. I'm going to tell you why. Just hold on. There's another stake that goes on. It goes for about half as much in the Meadows. I forget what it's called, but it's around the same time as the Beal. And his first stake is at the Meadows. Let's just stay at the Meadows. He's already started 
way before every other three-year-old that has any expectations this year. It's February. He's raced three times. Let's shut him down. Let's keep him at the Meadows. No shipping until we have to. Race him in that series, the King Card, whatever it's called. Uh, race him at that series in the Meadows. Race him in the first either Stallion or Sire Stakes. Who knows? At the Meadows. Then after that, we can go to the All-Stars if you want. If, if we think he's that kind of horse, he can race in the Sire Stakes, the Poconos, and the Meadows. And at that point, we might have a decent idea of what he is. Is he the 49 horse that could be a fringe player or a real player in the three-year-old division? Who knows? It's all pie-in-the-sky stuff, but you don't know. That's what good horses do. They put you in a spot where, how good are they? I don't know. Or is he just a useful animal? I don't know yet. He feels like a good horse, and, and I haven't. I was just talking to Scott a minute ago and James earlier about, about him. It's not like I've driven many North American Cup horses. I've driven some. I've driven in the North American Cup elimination. I've driven some good horses, but not like them. James is not a get, has not got a clear view of this colt because he is not the same horse he was before. And Scott said, yeah, you just don't know, right? You just got to put them in a position. You just got to put them in a position to be that horse and then hope they are. And that's the truth. Two weeks in the field, he's going out to Jacob Schaefer's on Sunday. I wish he could. Actually, I'm going to ask Jacob if he can make a special trip and get him out there earlier. Because every day is a wasted day, right? Today is Thursday. I guess not too bad. He's going to get Friday off. He's picking him up Sunday morning. It's not the end of the world. A couple of weeks out, aim for that first day race. School him up a couple of times. Throw a qualifier into him. Actually, I don't even think we have to. They put a 90-day rule because of the Meadows and everybody. Because I like it. I think you just have to have a flat line in 90 days to race in Pennsylvania, which is awesome. We can go ahead and qualify, but a couple of schoolers qualify or whatever. Just have them ready for that race, then the Meadows, Sire Steak, then we can go to the All-Stars if we think he's that kind of horse. Continue on with the next two, they're the Poconos, so you go All-Stars, Poconos, second leg, Poconos, third leg, Philadelphia. At that point, I think we can paint a picture of what we'd like the rest of the summer to look like. And that is time is on my side. Aside from all that, first and foremost, he looked tremendous today. Very impressed with him. Wrapped up going through the wire with the earplugs in. And as I said, his fastest three or five strides in the entire mile were the last ones he took going through the wire. Very impressive mile from him today. Now, uh, we have another horse. Similar timeline. Did not look as good last week. And that was my boy ready for landing. He's got to show me a lot more. There's going to be some erasers uh, pulled out on his staking for February 15th. I think we're going to have to pencil in a couple of a different path for time is on my side or an alternative path. And maybe the other side of the coin for ready for landing after tonight. This is it. This is last start before the 15th. And he has to show me, he has to prove to me via James that, um, that he's got a shot to, to be an okay horse. If he just comes out and throws a stinker in tonight, then he's going to be staked modestly. He'll be in the Bobby Weiss, and maybe in the Nomor's 2 3 claim condition races, and then uh, staked modestly throughout the season, or it could be a little more extensive. But that'll be up to him. And that's where I, those are two big, big timelines from today. One has already been completed, but time is on my side. And the other one is about to happen tonight with Ready for Landing. So interested to see how that plays out. And even if Ready for Lane doesn't quote wow us tonight. And if we stake him moderately, it doesn't mean he's a bad horse. He's still a nice horse. A $25,000 year, like full brother, three quarter brother to what the hell. No, wait. Yeah, three quarter brother to what the hell. With, with a bright future in front of him. He's already shown that he has talent. But I need him to show that he possesses it and can call upon it whenever we need him to. So that's what tonight, that's what today meant for us. Now, I'm just trying to put the finishing touches. I may be getting some videoing for you tomorrow um, from Ohio. I know my clients and my partners in Ontario are not going to like to hear this. Curtis McDonald was storm stayed in Prince Edward Island, and he is not leaving until tomorrow at 11 a.m. So he's trying to work out that Luke can run the, the computer side 
of the videoing tomorrow through Steve at Northfield Park as we usually do. It's going to rain at Northfield Park on Saturday and it is also going to rain in Ontario on Saturday. So I'm going to talk to Danny tonight and say he's probably going to have to train the babies on Friday. And if he does that, Curtis can't be there to drum. I apologize. That's just the way it's going to shake down. By the look of the forecast that I'm looking at, that's what's coming. So we should be able to get everybody trained, but we should be able to video uh, in Ohio tomorrow. And I know there's going to be a number of people, Pat and all my partners, are going to say, why can't we get somebody else to run the drone? Because it doesn't work that way. Luke cannot come out. He's not going to come out and run the drone at... Uh, at First Line Training Center, but we will be able to have those horses. And the good news is, I'll be home next week. I'm going to come home next week to go with those babies, even if I have to leave after the Meadows and go home. I am going to go home next week. Also. So that's the plan for um, for the horses in the near future. I gave you a thorough update of how the three-year-olds trained. Very impressed with time is on my side today, and eagerly awaiting a race from our boy, ready for landing tonight. So with that, I'm going to let you go. Hope you guys had a great day. And I'll, to all my partners, on time is on my side. Pretty impressive mile for him today. I hope everybody has a great rest of their week into the weekend. I will talk to you all very soon. Take care.